Hello and welcome to Idera's What's New video for SQL Diagnostic Manager version 10.6. The new features in the 10.6 release are primarily focused on two areas within the product. The first area is a revamped user interface that includes improvements not only to the aesthetics of the console, but also improve the workflows within the tool to help when troubleshooting SQL Server performance issues. The second area is focused on improving the monitoring of SQL Azure environments by enabling the use of Azure monitor counters which can be used to build your own custom collections for monitoring SQL Azure instances. Let's go ahead and show you some of these improvements and give you a better idea on what you can expect upon installing the 10.6 version of SQL Diagnostic Manager. So when we first open the SQL Diagnostic Manager console, you will notice obviously that the interface has been updated. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a modernized look, but other things that I think worth noting is it's freeing up a lot of real estate for you than compared to the previous versions, and I'll talk about that. And it's also making your day-to-day -day kind of tasks that much easier. Um, let's first just kind of mention the amount of real estate. When we look at the top of the screen, we don't have a lot of buttons. And there's not big bulky buttons for me to navigate. I've got these different kind of text boxes up at the top that you'll notice. The order and the groupings haven't changed in terms of how I navigate. It's the same in terms of the order. We have sessions, you know, queries, resources. Those things haven't changed. It's just that the boxes themselves are much smaller and, and allow me a little bit more space. The other thing that I would mention on the left side of the screen, we have the navigation bar. And so the navigation bar really hasn't changed that much in terms of what's in it, but what, it, what has changed is some of the behaviors. Um, so for one, I can drag the navigation bar over to the left and it collapses down. I would also be able to click on any of these items and they're still completely functional. For example, if I click on servers, it's gonna pop up my servers list. If I click on tags, it's gonna show me my tags. Um, and I get to see that view for the brief period of time I need it and I don't have to you know, switch, uh, or I should say, you know, waste that real estate otherwise. Um, so that's a nice thing. The other thing as far as the navigation bar is concerned is that uh, it's also dockable. So if I were to take it and just say, say drag it over to the right side of the screen, I can put it over on the right and make it dockable. Um, once again, making it more flexible if that's what I like. Uh, it's more of a preference thing, but um, I actually, my preference is on the left side. I'm old school, I guess, but if I were to go back over and look at this navigation bar, another new feature that you'll see is the ability to search through a list of instances that you might be managing. Now, in my case, I've only got a couple, but if I had, let's say, 300, that's a big difference. I would be able to very quickly, just by beginning to type the name of an instance, it's going to um, show me uh, the names that match whatever I'm typing, and then I would be able to quickly click on that instance, it's going to take me right to that particular view. Obviously very helpful from that standpoint. If, I, if I've got a couple hundred instances, it makes life a lot easier. If I just need to go and troubleshoot a specific one, I don't want to have to go digging and finding it. In terms of the navigation also, one of the things I would just mention, when you're switching back and forth from one instance to another, as you'll see here, if I'm looking at, let's say, this particular instance, so I'm on Sessions, uh, and then I go over, let's say, to the B Manali LT7 instance. Um, it's going to remember the last view I was on for each instance. So there's, I would call it a breadcrumb trail for each instance. If you're familiar in the past, that wasn't the case. You would have to actually, if you switch to another instance, you would have to navigate to the area that you would want from the very top of the of the navigation view. In this case, that's no longer the case. We don't have to do that. I can switch back and forth and it remembers where I was. And so I can basically pick up where I last left off with that particular instance I might have been looking at in the past. Well, the other thing that's also helpful is, and you, you might have done this in the past, where you're actually trying to compare metrics from one instance to another instance. And that wasn't as easy a thing either because you'd actually have to re-navigate each time you switched back and forth. Um, that's no longer the case. Um, so, for example, um, you know, on any of these, if I were to switch to any of these views, um, when I switch to the view and I click on the pull down, it will take me to the last view that I was on. So I don't have to switch back and forth and then re-navigate to the uh, area that I'm looking for. Uh, it's going to take me to that same view if I'm using this little drop down. So whatever view I'm in, it's going to take me to the same view of the other instance that I select, making it once again, that much easier to do comparisons of metrics and graphs and, and information when I'm trying to do comparative analysis. 
All right, so we've showed you a lot of the interface changes. I want to kind of make sure we cover all of them. So I think uh, the, the last bit of the actual interface changes are focusing our attention over here to the right side of the screen. There's actually quite a bit more, but I'm just kind of covering the main areas. And in this case here, what you'll see is we have a drop down. And this drop down provides us with a breakdown of different historical views that I can, I can see. So as an example of this, let's just jump over to my resources view on the Beam and Alley instance. We'll go to resources and you'll see I can now click on the pull down. And so this is just a very quick way for me to go back and see the last two hours, last four hours, last six hours, last you know five days of, of data. All of those are available to me. It's just a nice way to, to very quickly jump in and see a given window of time. Um, in the past, you had the history browsers, what we called it. That, that hasn't gone away. So this is just adding to what you can do in terms of viewing historical information. The same holds true with these little buttons here. Instead of the big arrows that we had before, they're smaller. And it just allows me to uh, step through historically what's happened in the past. Um, so I can go backwards like I'm doing now or obviously go forwards. Uh, if you're still wanting to use the history browser like you've known it in the past, you can always go and click on the history browser button. Uh, it's going to pop up the calendar, it's going to pop up the polling intervals, and then you're going to get to see those different polling intervals and be able to select which one you'd like to obviously look at. As far as the history browser is concerned, but when I don't need it, I can get rid of it. And once again, if I don't want to mess with that, I can just jump over to one of these views and it'll take me to the appropriate view of whichever one I select. I can also enter a custom range if I want to specifically enter a time and date and a range of time and dates, I should say. Um, and lastly, if I ever you know, obviously want to click to the real time view, that's something I can do as well just by clicking on real time. These are some of the ma major updates to the interface. Um, and that's going to be the bulk of what's kind of new in the product. The one thing I would also mention, though, that's uh, that's new, that's not necessarily interface related, uh, is when I go into let, the sessions view. And in the sessions view, one of the things we've added is when you go into the details of sessions, and this is where you're going to see all of the sessions that are running. Um, and on a lot of instances, you might have literally hundreds uh, of these different sessions and if you're looking to try to troubleshoot a particular area of these sessions in the past you would you know sort them and you might group them to find what you're looking for we now have the ability to use this filter and the important part of the filter is it has both inclusionary and exclusionary filters so I can quickly hone in on a particular application or host uh, to identify or troubleshoot um, the, the specific uh, sessions or view the specific sessions that I'm interested in in terms of the kind of interface changes and that feature, uh, those are they're obviously all new. Um, one other area that I would just say is kind of a preview of what's to come in 11.0 of Diagnostic Manager is the uh, cloud capabilities. Um, so I will just point out this release, um, what we have done for the Azure instances is you also now have an ability to add customized counters off of your Azure environments. Um, so the way that that works is you go into the administration section, right? And there's a custom counter section. And within the custom counter section, you can add a new custom counter, but notice now that you have an Azure server system counter that you can choose from. Um, so that is a new feature as well. And so when you click on that, you would just fill out uh, these different areas basically choosing the profile, the resource type, the resource name, and you're going to be able to choose from the metrics that are available from those different types of your environments that you're managing. Um, right now I don't have any profiles that are set, but uh, I wanted to kind of show you that as a kind of a sneak preview. Um, this is one of the features that's actually in the 10.6 release, but you're going to see a lot more to come in terms of cloud capabilities. Um, with the 11.0 release that's due out next. So hopefully this has been helpful and it gives you some insight into what's new in the version 10.6 of SQL Diagnostic Manager. It's been a pleasure to show you these things and if you have any questions or if you'd like to try this out for yourself, feel free to navigate to the IDERA website where you can download a free trial of this product. Thank you and have a great day.